Okay, today we're going to do conic sections, the ellipse. The geometric definition is where a plane intersects a cone at a diagonal. The algebraic definition is a set of points in a plane such that the sum of the distances from two fixed points called foci remains constant. Here is a picture of an ellipse. Notice it has a vertex, and, I mean it has a major axis in purple whose endpoints on the ellipse are called vertex or vertices in plural. And the minor axis that's in green is the shorter of the two axes and the endpoints be um, B and negative B are called covertices. Here's the equation of an ellipse. If A was equal to B, this would be the equation of a circle because um, the diameter or the radius of the major axis and the minor axis would be the same. And if the major axis and the minor axis are exactly the same, then it has to be a circle because the diameters would be equal. So A is not going to equal B. Some textbooks just call A the major axis. For purposes of this video, A will always be with the X value, and B will always be with the Y value. And then the greater of the two will be the major axis. The center is HK. Just like in a circle, you pull it straight off of the equation. If A is greater than B, then the major axis is horizontal. Notice A is under the X value. The X axis is horizontal, and that's how you can remember it. If B is greater than A, then the major axis is vertical. B is under the Y value, so therefore, just like the Y value, the Y axis is vertical, so is the ellipse. Let's look at an equation. We're going to grab this. This is the ellipse. So let's look at its major components. Its major components are the major axis, the center, and the minor axis. The easiest to pull off is the center, which is negative 2, 3. The next value we're going to look at is which one is the major axis. Oh, sorry, skip that part. There's the center. Since A is greater than B, the major axis is horizontal. So, we're going to look at the value under x, which is 25. The major axis is 2a. But an easier way to look at it straight off the equation is just simply 2 square roots of 25, because if you took the square root of 25, you would get a. So our major axis is 10 units long, resulting in 5 units on either side of the center. In the same way with the minor axis, it's 2b, but you can simply take two square roots of the value under y, which is 16, and that would give us 8. So our minor axis also goes to the center, and since it's 8, it's 4 on each side. So our length of our major axis is 10, and the length of our minor axis is 8. Here's another equation. Notice there is not a value under the x minus 6 squared. And there is no left or right transformation, I mean up or down transformation for y. Sorry. So we can pull the center off. It's 6, 0. But in order to get an a or a b, we're going to have to think about what is the denominator under x minus 6 squared. And we can, of course, put it over 1, because anything over 1 is itself. Since b, 30, b, which would be 6, because it's the square root of 36, is bigger than a, which is 1, then the major axis is going to be vertical. And the major axis is 12. Because the square root of 36 is 6, and 2 times 6 is 12, resulting in 6 on each side of the center. The minor axis is 2, because if you take the square root of 1, you get 1, and 2 times 1 is 2, resulting in a value of 1 unit on either side. 
So this is a vertical ellipse. It's taller than it is wider. So here's some information, and we're going to write an equation for this. The major axis is horizontal, so we know the larger number is going to be um, underneath the x value. The center is negative 3, negative 9. The major axis is 16 units long, so my a value is going to be 8. And my minor axis is 14 units long. So my, min uh, my b value will be 7, which is half of 14. So let's start setting this up. Here's the initial equation, and now we can put in our components. We put in our center. Negative 3 is a plus 3 because it's x minus a negative 3. We put in our y value, negative 9. y minus negative 9 is y plus 9. As I said earlier, we take half of the 16, which would be 8, and we're going to square that. That's my a value. And my minor axis is 14, so half of 14 is 7, which is our b, and we're going to square that, giving us x plus 3 squared over 64 plus y plus 9 squared over 49 equals 1. Here's another example. This one, we're going to have the major axis be vertical. So we know it's going to be the y values. Again, we start with our basic equation, and then we put in our information. x minus negative 5 is x plus 5. y minus 10, because it's a positive 10. The major axis, since it's vertical, is going to be under the y value. So the major axis is 12 units long, therefore our b is 6, so we're going to get 6 squared. Our minor axis is 8 units long, so we take half of 8, which is 4, and that's going to be 4 squared. Performing that operation, we're going to get x plus 5 squared over 16, plus y minus 10 squared over 36 is equal to 1. Now what if they don't give us major and minor axis? Well, this is a little bit... Um, you have to think a little harder on this one, but um, we still set up our initial equation, and we still have our center, okay, 5, 1. That's easy to do. But the distance for x, realize, is from um, is, is from 5 to negative 2. And our distance from y is 1 to 4. So look from the center. Our center x value is 5. And it goes all the way to negative 2. So that is going to be our a value. That's 7. The distance is 7. That is where the 7 comes from for a. The distance from y, from the center, which is the y value is 1, to our other y value, which is 4, is going to give me 3 units. So the distance for b is going to be 3 units from the center, 3 squared. 5 comes from there, 1 comes from there, 7 is our 7 squared, the distance from 5 to negative 2, and the distance from 1 to 4 is 3, so that's also going to be squared. Giving us this equation and the answer. Notice 7 is A. So our major axis is actually going to be 14 units long because it's 2A. Our minor axis is going to be 6 units long because that's B. Now, sometimes you can see an equation for an ellipse written in this form. Uh, they're just trying to confuse you. What you need to do is you multiply both by the a and b value, or you divide, I'm sorry, by both a and b values. So you're going to take each one of these and divide it by 16 times 9.
16 times 9 is 144. So the 16s will cancel in the first ones, the 9s will cancel in the second term, and 144 divided by 144 will cancel out and give us 1. So we're going to put this in standard form. The x squared will be over 9 plus y squared over the 16 that remains, and 144 over 144 is 1. Here's the graph. The length of the major axis is 8 because we take half of 16, which is 8, and we go 8 on each side, so that actually, no, 4 on each side. So the length of the major axis is 8, 4 on each side of the center. The minor axis is 6 because we take the square root of 9, which would give us 3, and then we put 3 on each side of the center. So the entire length of the minor axis is 6. So basically what you're doing to find major and minor axis is you're taking the square root of the A value or the B value and then doubling it to get the entire length of the major or minor axis. Oh, this is a really ugly one. But you know what you have to do here. The same thing you had to do in a circle and for parabola. We're going to have to complete the square. So our first step is to provide the blanks we're going to need. 4x squared plus 16x plus blank plus 9y squared minus 54y plus blank equals negative 61 plus blankety plus blank. <laughs> Now, because our coefficient's not 1, we have to factor it out. So we're going to take the 4 out of the first term, and we're going to get x squared plus 4x, and the 9 out of the y terms, getting y squared minus 6y. Then we have to complete the square by taking half of 4, squaring it, and adding it to both sides, which would give us 4, and then half of the y, which is 3, squaring it and adding it to both sides. Now, if you notice on the right-hand side, I didn't add 4 and 9. I added 16 and 81. That's because you also have to realize when you added that 4 inside the parentheses, it's 4 from the outside the parentheses till that term, which is 16. So 16 has to be added to each side. And on the, in the second term, even though we put a 9 inside the parentheses, we actually have added 81, 9 times 9, to the um, value, so on the left-hand side, so we have to add 81 to the right-hand side. Take a minute and look at that. So we multiply them by 4 times 4 gives me 16, and 9 times 9 gives me the 81. Now we complete the square simplifying x squared plus 4x plus 4 into x plus 2 squared, and y squared minus 6y plus 9 into y minus 3 squared. And then we combine our values on the right-hand side, giving us 36. And as before, we have to divide each of those by 4 times 9, or 36, canceling out the values we don't need, and giving us x plus 2 squared over 9, plus y minus 3 squared over 4 equals 1. Finally, a recap just as another example. Our center is negative 2, 3. The length of our major axis is 6, so it's 3 points from each of the center. And the length of our minor axis is 4. Hope this helps, and if you have any questions, please see me tomorrow in class.